What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing, the Museum of the Forgotten Fistigov series. I'm going to have a complete conversation with you concerning the history of boxing. But in order for me to be successful in this conversation, it will require your patience and time. Thumbs up and comments if necessary. In order for you to have a better understanding on boxing in its current state, you must go back, all the way back, to the beginning. You must be able to trace back the laws that have been changed, the government bodies that have been added, the presidents of those government bodies. Who were they? Where did they come from? And who were they working for? You must remember, in any championship bout from the very beginning to now, there's always been an underground play from the beginning of time to its current state, and it always will be, because boxing does not have a national commissioner. Never had one, it never will. Everyone profits from boxing, and I mean everyone, from politicians, to the mob game, to racketeers, everyone but the fighter themselves. We're gonna take a look at 1619, take a look at 1681, We'll study 1719 to 1730. You see, 1719 to 1730, England had his first champion. His name was Jim Figgs. He had a protege. His name was Jack Brockton. He was the third heavyweight champion. And he was responsible for the seven rules of boxing. We'll take a look at the promoters, the managers, the referees. And we'll connect the dots to see if there was any corruption in boxing, if their names constantly come up. 90% of the times, their names will. To give you an example, in 1927, Soldiers Field, a bout took place between Jack Dempsey and Manasseh Mola and Gene Tunney, the fighting Marine. It was the famous lawn count. The referee was Dave Barry. He was planted by Al Capone. It was a famous lawn count to this day. It reminds me of Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. It reminds me of many fights that took place during the course of history. We'll go through those and we'll connect the dots. Boxing has always had his ups and downs, but it's a way out for those who live in the ghetto, the barrios. We're going to talk about boxing from April 13th, 1867. You see, the first American boxer to become recognized as middleweight champion was Tom Challenger. He defeated Dooney Harris. It would be a bare knuckle contest that would take 23 rounds to complete. They fought in San Francisco, California, and $5,000 was required for both men to enter the contest. You see, that's how these fighters were paid. And you set aside money so when the police came to interfere with the contest, you would pay them off and offer them a front row seat. Everyone would benefit from boxing, even the fighters. But long term, the fighters would pay a price. Those spectators who offered money to witness the contest, they would pay 10 cents. For a good seat, they would pay $5. And those seats would be on top of fences, on tree branches. You would watch fights on floating barges. You would watch them in ankle deep water. You would watch them in caves, in backwoods, wherever you can find an opportunity to see a fight. Now the first lightweight championship contest was between Abe Hickman. He reigned between 1868 to 1872, he would face Peter Newton, July 16, 1881, at the Hippodrome in Melbourne, Australia. They were fighting for the Victoria State Middleweight Championship Contest. You see, there was a lightweight championship contest behind the middleweight championship contest. That always happened for many years. But it was a tournament that was created. Four men were left standing. Johnny Clark, Billy Edwards, Arthur Chambers. Arthur Chambers would wind up becoming champion 
and he would retire. John 4th, 1868. Tom Dow would defeat Ned Kelly in Leavenworth, Kansas. The battle only lasted seven seconds. 1879. The future middleweight champion, non parole Jack Dempsey, was in the front line of the lightweight division until he grew out of that division. So in 1885, Jack McArthur had claimed and then held the title until he retired. In 1896, he retired undefeated. You see, Jack Dempsey, non parole would win the middleweight championship belt, but he would lose that title to Bob Fitzsimmons. But although he was a middleweight champion, he never really weighed more than 140 pounds, 138 at best. Now, like I said, the first American boxer to become recognized as middleweight champion was Tom Challenger. He defeated Dooney Harris. It was a bare knuckle contest that lasted 23 rounds to complete San Francisco, California. That's very important information because you have to understand where fighters would get the money from before promoters would exist. And we'll go through that as this conversation moves forward. February 7th, 1882, Petty Ryan was knocked out by John O'Sullivan in Mississippi City in nine rounds. The referee was Colonel Alex Brewster. And the other referee was Jack Hardley. Yes, you heard me correctly. There were two referees in that contest. John O'Sullivan, who was from Boston, Massachusetts. He was born October 15th, 1858 in Boston, Massachusetts. He died February 2nd, 1918 in Abington, Massachusetts. He stood 5 foot 10 and a half inches, had a 74 inch reach. He was 59 years of age and weighed 182 to 250 pounds. Now he had a total bout career of 46 fights, 42 wins, 32 knockouts, one loss, and three draws. John O'Sullivan had more fights than what's on the record. Boxing was always illegal. And there were so many fights that were held in backwoods, you couldn't keep count of them all. He was a straight A student in Dwight Grammar School. He attended Boston College for three months. He played baseball and was paid $30 to $40 monthly. And Sullivan fought on the both the Marcus of Queensbury rules and the London prize ring rules. He was a very interesting individual. He would walk around the state of Boston stating that he would whip any son of a bitch in the house. But did he? Because John O'Sullivan drew the color line. George Godfrey, his name was Old Chocolate, and Peter Jackson, better known as Peter the Great, or the Black Prince, both sent John O'Sullivan a telegram. They offered to fight him, and he refused. And that's very interesting because it brings me to another fight that we'll be talking about in one moment. July 17, 1872, George Rookie had challenged middleweight Tom Challenger for a crack at his championship. And Tom Challenger ignored this challenge. So he was stripped of his crown and George Rookie was granted the title. Why didn't that apply to John O'Sullivan? When he turned down Peter Jackson and owed the chocolate, George Godfrey. July 8, 1889, John O'Sullivan had defeated Jay Corain in 75 rounds in Richburg, Mississippi. This was the last bare knuckle contest in a championship bout. Jonathan Lawrence Sullivan had weighed 198 pounds. Jay Corain weighed 195 pounds. Sullivan was awarded the victory by the referee, John Fitzpatrick. John O'Sullivan, I have a scrapbook. 1,000 pages, front and back. I showed a few pages on my channel. There is so much information in that book of John O'Sullivan. 
95% is Police Gazette, the Daily Mirror, many articles, photos, and full spread, double page spread posing shots. And I read up on John O'Sullivan. He was a very strong and powerful fighter. But he drew the color line. And that draws an asterisk to his name. He and General Jim Corbin, Jim Jeffries, the boilermaker, they drew the color line. They must be held accountable. George Rookie had lost the middleweight championship crown to the Professor Mike Donovan. Donovan will retire. And he would leave the middleweight championship belt on ice. It was left for a tournament. The middleweight championship was vacated until 1884. A Canadian middleweight challenger by the name of George Full James had challenged any middleweight in the United States. He wanted to smoke. He would take on all comers. This was in 1882. George Godfrey, Peter Jackson, Peter Felix, many names were available as well. In 1878, Morris Grant had lost his colored heavyweight championship title to Professor Charles Hadley. 1880, the Amateur Athletic Association was now founded in England. 1881, the colored heavyweight champion, Professor Charles Hadley, has been active. 1876, Charles C. Smith had claimed the Colored Heavyweight Championship title. February 23, 1883, Old Chocolate, George Godfrey was the Colored Heavyweight Champion. 1883, New Orleans Olympic Club would now be founded. 1887, Black Pearl Harris Smart declared himself as the World Colored Middleweight Champion. 1888, the American Fair Play Rules to Govern Glove Contest. Very, very important information. 1891, Ed Benley and Charlie Turner would fight for the Colored Heavyweight Championship belt. 1888, the Amateur Athletic Union, which is better known as the AAU, National State Championships, would begin. 1889, John L. Sullivan defeats J. Kilrain. 75 rounds, Richmond, Virginia. Sullivan would become the world heavyweight champion. And that would be the last bare knuckle championship contest in history. Let's step back for one moment. In 1887, John L. Sullivan was supposed to take on J. Kilrain, but John L. Sullivan didn't have the financial backing to participate in that contest. So they would go to England and take care of a man, pay him a little bit of money, send him over. His name was Jim Smith. Jim Smith was a middleweight slash light heavyweight. He was the English champion. And so he would unify the title with an American champion, Jake Kilwin. And Jake Kilwin would defeat Jim Smith. Richard K. Fox would present the Police Gazette belt. So in 1889, John O'Sullivan would face Jake Kilwain in one of the most brutal contests that took seven hours to complete. Nightfall would rain. Lanterns were brought out. John O'Sullivan and Jake Kilwain would crawl back to their corners. John O'Sullivan skin was erased off the metacarpals of his hand. Both men were unrecognizable by their wives. They would vomit on the way back as they were crawling to their corners. That's how tenacious both these men were. And that was a classic of a fight if I ever read about one. 
September 2nd, 1889, Carl McCarthy and Frank Donovan drew 14 rounds in Elmford, New York on Labor Day. September 5th, 1889, George Dixon and Joe Benjamin had a six round no decision contest in Philadelphia on Memorial Day. February 9th, 1895, Jack Evanbant had knocked out Tom McLawley, 12 rounds. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 1893, Bob Cunningham fights Tim O'Connell in the last battle on turf with two ounce gloves. The last battle on turf was fought in 1893. 1892, Sammy Cully lost a 15 round bout to Bob Cunningham, Long Island Athletic Club. They both used two ounce gloves. April 6, 1893, Andy Bowen and Jack Berkey had taken on a bout that lasted seven hours and a half to complete. 110 rounds. It was the longest glove match to this day in boxing history. The bout took place in New Orleans, Louisiana. And what was interesting about that contest? That Andy Bowen was not the original participant that evening. He was the trainer. But since his charge got cold feet and everyone was in the audience waiting for this contest, he decided to put on the gloves. Little did he know he would be involved in the longest glove match contest, 110 rounds in all of boxing. Members of the audience went home to take a nap. They went home to get dinner. They came back, and these men were still fighting. 1896, Athens, Greece Olympic Games will be in full charge. November 27, 1896, lightweight Frank Earn, without point, former bantamweight and world featherweight champion George Dixon, 20 rounds in New York. Pay attention to this. December 25th, 1888. Colored Australian heavyweight champion, Black Prince, Peter Jackson. Knocked out Peter Marr in two rounds, double and out. Now Peter Marr got the chance to fight Bob Fitzsimmons for his championship. The Black Prince, Peter Jackson, Never got that chance. He faced Jim Jeffries, who was a heavyweight champion. The bout went 61 rounds. And it turned out to be a draw. Peter Jackson never got his shot. February 22nd, 1896, the world lightweight champion, old master Joe Gans, Knocks out Jimmy Kernhart, five rounds, Boston, Massachusetts. February 22nd, 1898, Kid Broad knocks out Mike Kearns in seven rounds in New York. Now, Peter Jackson, who would eventually die at the age of 40 of tuberculosis, would have relinquished his colored heavyweight championship title. On December 21st, 1896, the king of the battle royale, Bob Armstrong, would defeat Charlie Strong for the vacant colored heavyweight championship title. Bob Armstrong would now become the colored heavyweight champion. January 29, 1898, Frank Childs would defeat.